turbines can develop much more power than gas engines. And gas turbines would be preferable for generating electricity from generator gas in earnest, on an industrial scale. Today turbines are made so that you can stand next to them and talk during their operation. A lot of companies offer turbine repair services and sell used turbines. But a whole range of restrictions apply to the fuel, gas in our case, on which the turbine work. The gas must be clean. If it contains ash, the ash will scratch the blades. Tar will stick to the blades and probably unbalance them. Water contained in the gas is also undesirable, as company representatives told me. All of this could be eliminated by clearing the gas. But one problem is very difficult to solve. Gas must be supplied at a pressure of about 5 atmospheres in case of small gas turbines, and about 16 atmospheres in case of large ones. The pressure depends on the manufacturer. But now, browsing through dozens of patents on gasifiers running on low-quality small fuels and selecting the ideal version of the device to use with turbines, I came across a patent where several problems were solved at once, low-quality small fuel was burned to run a turbine on its gas. Rather, on flue gases. Moreover, raw peat was used as fuel, the actual wet peat collected from fields and not even dried. In the same way, it would be possible to use biosilt from urban sediment basins simply by digging it out with an excavator and loading it into the plant. I could not disregard this work. Let's take a look at the patent. At first, I thought that generator gas was burned in a gas turbine. But it turned out that fuel was not converted into generator gas but simply burned, and the pressurized flue gas drove the turbine to generate electricity. Let's look at the scheme. Before being fed into the station, peat is coarsely ground and electro-separated in order to remove accidental metal particles. Next, raw peat with 80-86% to 86 moisture content is fed into hopper 2, from where screw feeder 3 feeds it to dryer 4. Exhaust gases after the turbine marked by number 22 enter the same dryer. There are inscriptions on the scheme. They are difficult to read, but I will try to do it. It is written that the flue gas temperature exceed 300 degrees. These gases dry wet peat. From dryer 4, flue gases enter cyclone 5, where fine peat is captured, and the gas is released into the atmosphere through pipe 25. There is an inscription near the pipe indicating that at this point the gas temperature is already 85 degrees Celsius. There are screw feeders 6 and 7 under dryer 4 and cycle 5. They pass peat to conveyor 8 which feeds it to conveyor 9. Then conical screw feeder 10 pumps the peat into drying chamber 11 located in the furnace. Flue gases enter this drying chamber from below picking up the peat and carrying it into cyclone 13. The inscription on the cyclone reads, peat humidity, 35%. Flue gases from the cyclone go to the turbocharger 14. There is a pipe in front of the turbocharger. The inscription on it reads, flue gases. Temperature, 180 degrees, pressure, 9 atmospheres. The same inscription is on the pipe after the turbocharger. After the turbocharger, the flue gases go to the collector, where they are separated. One part goes to the drying chamber 11, the other goes to the heat exchanger 15. Thus, the circulating flue gases finally dry the peat in the drying chamber. Cyclone 13 is also a receiving hopper for dry peat, from where it is supplied by screw feeder 16 to mixing chamber 17. In the chamber, the peat is mixed with the air injected into the combustion chamber by turbocharger 18. The turbocharger supplies the air at a pressure of 9 atmospheres. During the supply process, the air is heated up to 100 degrees. This is evidenced by the inscription on the scheme near the turbocharger 18. The air and peat mixture leaves the mixing chamber to enter combustion chamber 19, where the peat is burned in suspension under pressure. Let me remind you that gasification under pressure, 9 atmospheres in our case, increases the amount of methane in the gas to about 16%, hence, greatly raising the gas calorific value. This makes the pressurized process very desirable. In the USSR, specialists always tried to perform gasification under pressure in order to make gas more caloric. It was more profitable to transport it through pipelines over long distances. The peat combustion temperature of 1200 degrees is indicated on the peat combustion chamber 19. Turbocharger 14 sucks part of the flue gases from it into drying chamber 11, and the rest of the gases enter the afterburner chamber 20. The inscription on the afterburner reads, 850 degrees Celsius. The flue gases that have previously passed through the economizer and heated in it come here from the drying chamber. The remains of peat dust and organic compounds formed during the drying of peat are burned in the afterburner. 
From there, the flue gases enter heat exchanger 15, are cooled, and then enter cyclone 21, where they are thoroughly cleaned from dust. The clean flue gases enter gas turbine 22, which drives the turbocharger 18 and the electric generator. The ash deposited in the combustion chamber 19 and cyclone 21 flows by gravity into receivers 23 and 24, where it mixes with water and is extracted from the system. The flue gases exit the gas turbine to enter dryer for where they cool down and, at the same time, primarily dry the peat. After passing dryer 4 and cyclone 5, the flue gases are released into the atmosphere through pipe 25. Let me remind you that you can support my work by subscribing to my channel. There are closed useful videos in the sponsor section. Their titles can be seen in the playlists. See you soon.